Mark Ritz, Carnivore Snacks, it is such a pleasure to talk with you. We've known each other now a few years and just just really value your expertise as a as an entrepreneur and CEO um, and also your friendship. I just love how transparent you are about business and uh, product and and what kind of moves you. Um, so real pleasure to have you as a sponsor of Organuary. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, brother. I appreciate yeah. it. Always fun to talk. Um, so carnivore snacks, it's like, it's so easy for me to assume everyone knows who you guys are because you've been out for a few years and it's just such a high quality product. And I assume because you're doing such a killer job of marketing and whatnot that everyone knows, but let's just, I guess, assume that they haven't heard of you. And if they have, maybe they haven't tried you because I uh, I got to personally share that I had not tried you guys until this summer. I knew of you guys. And of course, I knew the quality and I was promoting you guys, almost assuming like, oh, I don't need to taste it. I know how good it is. I just know it's going to be good. But I actually utilized the product this summer when I was driving across the US. I was moving and I had, um, I had your product in the car because I knew while I was traveling that I was going to be limited on when I could stop and where I could stop. And I was just kind of, kind of you know, that travel food anxiety of like, oh, where, where am I going to find food? And I was blown away, like truly blown away that it was not only so tasty, but it completely satiated me. It was, it provided, so as a chef, I talk about this a lot, but there's like texture, you know, a lot of us. We, we 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 don't realize it, but we're actually fed less on flavor and more on texture. Texture is a huge, huge mover of what makes it motivates us to eat. And the texture is like a chip. And for all of those, anyone like me who has this kind of chip kind of like addiction, even though I got it under control, but that's what it was previously <laughs> it was an addiction. These met that kind of need of that crispiness and that chip like quality. So kudos. Uh, but before I just want to go into um, a little bit about how, how did you get involved with carnivore snacks? Yeah. So thanks by the way, for the intro and all the kind words. Appreciate it. Um, I got involved with uh, my co-founder, Sylvia. She, she reached out one day and it was basically like, Hey, like I, I think I landed on a product and um she was basically asking me if I knew anybody that can help with like a website or, you know, she, she didn't really know what to do. She had a cool idea and a cool product, but not necessarily the e-commerce um, skill set. So I, being a director of e for a couple of companies prior, I, I just asked her to send me some product first and, uh, you know, I just want to see if I like it. And then I did. I loved it. It was absolutely just something unlike anything I've ever experienced before. And I just asked if she wanted to partner up and that's, that's how it started. I mean, I met Sylvia through my first business and that's how she knew to reach out to me. She kind of saw me building my first business on the side, which didn't work out. Um, uh, and, and yeah, that's, that's kind of how we connected. And that was now, man, we've known each other for like six or, or seven years. Uh -huh. We started carnivore snacks about three and a half years ago, maybe. Oh, so she she had figured out she was working on the formula six or seven years ago. You're saying, or or how how soon after she brought you in did you guys start fulfilling orders? No, no, she she again like she I was running a business called Ritz Fit, which was just kind of like this membership platform for like natural products, and I had a podcast and all this stuff. And I'd found her on um, Instagram. She was doing a lot of biohacking stuff, just yeah. really trying to optimize her health. And so interviewed her got to know her and we knew each other for a few years. And then it was just randomly, I got a DM from her saying, Hey, I think I landed on a product. And that's when I was just like, all right, send it my way. Again, yeah. we've already known each other for a few years and tried it. And honestly, like the rest was, was history. And I mean, obviously in that history part, holy moly, it was a lot of hurdles to get over, but here we are. Yeah. But truly, I mean, truly unique product right there is at the time particularly then there was nothing else like it right i mean you now you have chicken chips which aren't even authentic truly authentic product like you guys i mean because that has you know um different starches in it to kind of make it bind i mean you are you are what basically two ingredients right salt and meat really yeah. I, I mean we we're the we're the original carnivore snack there's absolutely no doubt about that have there been people um you know 
imitators, I'm, yeah, sure. There will always be imitators and there will always be innovators. And you kind of choose which one you want to, which side you want to be on. Both can be successful, um, but we stay in our own line and we feel really good about the quality of our product relative to um, some other options out there. And we remain obsessed with that. Well, let's we, talk about, let's talk about that. Like, so share what, what is that quality and, and what are you looking for? Quality starts, it absolutely starts with sourcing, okay? If we don't get the right cut of meat from, you know, domestically from regenerative farms, it will show through the product. And it's not easy because when you are sourcing 100% grass-fed, grass-finished, it can be leaner. And if you want that texture of that melt in your mouth pastry like texture especially when we're talking more of the traditional cuts and not the sliders you got to get some good intramuscular fat and when you go and you go to the grocery store you see all this like intramuscular fat beautiful looking steaks like most of the time those are grain finished so sourcing it took a while to dial in and it took a while to find all the right people that met our sourcing standards but i think if there's anything that separates us in the industry it is our ability to source um, and have a grip on the supply chain and, you know, all of our partner farms, they, they just do it so well. They're such good farmers and it shows through the product. Um, and so that's like number one, if we're not sourcing the best quality meat domestically, then it's going to come out more like cardboard and more chewy. Have we experienced difficulties? Absolutely. You know, when you grow, you got to look for more suppliers. Some suppliers worked out, some haven't. And, uh, you know, that's been, that's been the greatest challenge in our growth um, is to find enough supply, but we've done a, a really great job up to this point. Uh, the next thing is just like being obsessed with process and consistency. So we do make it ourselves. We do not outsource it. A lot of jerky manufacturers, they use co-packers to make their product. Right. We wanted full control over the customer experience, full control over the recipes, and uh, it gets really, really hard to make the same product as you continue to scale and have to use different equipment than you originally did and then have to use 50 employees to make it rather than the one person that created it. And sure, have we had our problems? We sure did. I mean, in the last two months were really rough, but we took steps back, slowed the business down, revisited process and found some of the issues and we have a better product now from it so that's that's our obsessions man on the process side yeah that's good stuff um i are you guys are, are you guys thinking about going retail or or are you able to uh, due to how it's manufactured what's what's the vision of that you know i think uh would it be really cool to do retail it sure absolutely would i i, I tell everybody same answer to this question never shutting it down can we yeah the the option's open it's just we need to continue to support regenerative agriculture aggressively and the the industry needs to grow alongside with us um i think to support that channel and to be able to stay committed to our sourcing standards right what are, what are some of the hurdles you've seen in the regenerative space or are you um i mean is it avail is it that not enough you know ranches or farms are doing it so you have limited source or or because obviously that's that's a really you know important piece of organuary is like it's not just about you know choosing good companies everyone involved is definitely a good company but it's also about like well we need to vote with our dollars and we need to be you know focusing on changing how we are raising these animals how we're growing food um and so are you seeing kind of big holes or, or are you seeing it getting better? What's your, what's your thoughts? I definitely see it getting better. There's more people doing it. Right. And that's, that's the most important thing. If there's more people doing it. There's more people investing attention and education to getting good at it. Um, and, you know, I can't speak as if I'm the farmer that's, that's, that's out there doing it. Do I speak directly with our partner farms? Yes, a lot. And, um, it's something that's a big part of our partnerships and 
and following up on their progress, are they positively impacting the land? You know, we've we've worked really closely with an individual who's very well known in the regenerative space um, on the consulting side. He works with us frequently and helps us vet and source um, on the regenerative side. But I think like right now, one of the problems is like, you know, you look at really nice programs like Lance Market, you know, they might be the best of the best right now. We started off Lance Market, but we back out because there are farms that are practicing regenerative agriculture that we wanted to support and buy from. And if they want to eventually become part of land to market, which is comes to a cost, right? There's a cost mm -hmm. for these certifications. Then maybe our um, buying journey can help them get there. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, you hear a lot of the big names talking about greenwashing now, and they're right, it happens. Um, but we have a really, really tight process in place with an individual who I think is a top five name in the industry who helps us vet and has actually written out and created our own sourcing protocol internally. So, yeah, I think that's a little bit of a problem is it's just, a, it's a little bit siloed right now and we need to kind of be more like open it's like all these companies just like, oh, I want to source regeneratively. So then they'll go and they go, they'll look at land to market. And that's great. That's going to be some great stuff, but they only have so many partner farms. Right. So you got to expand and and again, be uh, let's approach this with open arms and like continue to educate and and find the ones doing it right. I think that's a gosh, that's such a great point. You know, I I, I saw this with organic, of course, early on when organic was becoming a thing, is that um people farm really good farms that uh, when I would go to the farmer's markets and be buying as a chef for my different clients and my business, just high quality farms doing better beyond organic and they weren't certified organic. So people would avoid them. And I was like, you guys are crazy. Like these farms are better. We can't just go off of these labels. We have to invest in the people and the farms that are doing it right. And, yeah. and and let go of these these very narrow definitions that aren't always even as accurate. Like that, I think that's where the greenwash mm -hmm. comes in is that it's like you, you we have this term organic, but a lot of people don't truly understand what it means and then what it doesn't mean, right? They don't realize mm -hmm. how much gets in through the certification. And then you yeah. go to some farms and they're really stringent, but they're not certified organic and people balk. But it's like, I, I like that perspective of like, you know, to build the industry, we sometimes have to uh, go outside of it initially to support the outliers and bring them closer in um, with, you know, with our, with our investments and whatnot. So that's, that's a really cool perspective. Um, now, where do you guys, how, what have you guys been seeing as you guys grow? Um, what kind of testimonies are you hearing? I mean, cause obviously you know, it's in the name of the product carnivore, right? So you're probably serving a huge part of the carnivore community, but are you starting to see people that aren't carnivore going like, Hey, wait a second, what is this thing? And like, and what kind of feedback are you hearing from people getting kind of more of that protein um, in their diet versus mm -hmm. all the starch, you know? Yeah. It's a really, really good point to bring up. The industry is shifting towards um, what I would call prioritization protein, trying to move away from some of the dogma diets and into the, hey, how do I, I just want to prioritize protein for performance, for health. Um, and you just see a lot of the big names talking about protein's impact on your overall health. Uh, so that's been huge for us in our marketing. We launched off the backs of the carnivore community. It was great. That's where we got our validation, but we didn't want to just live there. And so marketing protein is our best lever. Why? It's not marketing gimmicks. Look at the back of the package. It's unbelievable how much protein is in one back. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. I mean, now how, and this is kind of more personal question, but how is it, how is your kind of diet and way of eating changed since you've gotten on board with carnivore? I'm sure you were in, influenced initially a bit getting in, but do you find yourself, um, 
kind of increasing your protein and feeling different or better on that? Or what's changed in your life from being a part of this company? Well, it's interesting because you run a company that has a product that could be arguably offer some of the most nutrient dense food on the planet. But at the end of the day, you're like obsessed with your business and entrepreneurship and yeah. um, at the expense of health. And so I'm the first to admit it, man. I mean, like three, four years ago, like I was very happy with my health. I was cut up. I was athletic. I was mobile. And now I'm none of that. And, <laughs> you know, as of January 1, don't call it cliche, but, you know, new, it, it is really a, a, a new me. And, and the fact that I have carnivore snacks, um, which I do buy, by the way, we, we get an employee discount, but I do buy it. Uh, <laughs> you're not it's, just, a it's a huge you're also a customer. <laughs> That's right. I am a customer. And if you are somebody that is tracking like macros, it's an unbelievable product, man. Like that's one of the, been one of the problems with macros. It's like, dude, where do I go? How do I go find enough protein to meet my macros? And snacks makes it super easy. Yeah, that's awesome. I hear you, man. That is that, you know, I always kind of, um, I talk about this every now and then on podcasts and whatnot, but like you, you see people in the health field that are influencers and or entrepreneurs and there, a lot of us are unhealthy because we're, we're, we're working so hard to promote it, to get it out there for everyone else, make it available that our own health suffers. Um, and I, when I started uh pluck, I was very conscious that I was like, I'm not going to do that again. Cause my previous business, I was like, forget about it. I was overworked and unhealthy. Didn't work out and nothing. I mean, I felt like I lost five years working in that business and, um, mm -hmm. And so I really went about trying to make sure that I built in my self care with this company, and and so far it, I have. I, I I you know knock on wood that it's it's I'm still taking care of myself. But um, kudos to you though for getting back on track with it because I I know when you know your 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 mind's on your business, it's hard to uh, it's oh, hard yeah. to get away because you, you just because the you know you're in your bed doesn't mean you're not still working on business in your head. So I know it's hard to escape it as an entrepreneur. Yeah. But kudos to you. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's it's always a pleasure talking with you. Um, I um, I want to make sure everyone knows um, that you guys are offering a 15% discount. If you're listening or watching this video during the month of January 2024, uh, save 15% um, through carnivore snacks using the, the uh, code ORGANUARY24. That's good till January 31st. And um, maybe just quickly talk about some of the products and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll say goodbye to these fine people. Sure. Well, man, it's a lot different. Last time uh, you and I spoke, we launched 17 new cuts this last year. What? Um, you know, I mean, a lot, a few of those are like limited edition, not available all year round, but um, you know, we, your main like staples are going to be ribeye, New York strip, beef sliders. Okay. Sliders of the chips, more of a circle like that. And then ribeye will be more like an actual ribeye. And you're going to Yeah, the ribeyes are it's amazing. Uh, we've got chuck. We've got tenderloin. Uh, we've got leg of lamb, lamb shoulder, lamb sliders, pork loin. Um, we've got ancestral bison sliders. Really nice um, blend of organ meats and, and uh, ground bison. We've got uh, wild boar coming out at the end of this month. Uh, we're all over the place, man. See, we, we cater to that inner carnivore. Um, and you're doing chicken skins now as well? Chicken skins. Ours is a little bit different. It's not like a hard kind of, man, piece of glass. It's It takes a little bit get, to get used to because it, it is very fatty. And so it's more of like this, uh, it's more of chewy, but it's mm -hmm. because it's so fat, man. It's just the, the amount of fat that's in your mouth while you're chewing it is so like flavorful. Mm. I mean, it's satiating. Like you can just eat a few pieces and be full and then like come back. Um, so we do, we do chicken skins. We also have chicken sliders. That's going to be your closest thing to a chip. It's square. It's almost got this like Triscuit type texture. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Um, and then the, I think the most exciting thing that we've probably launched this year, it's been incredibly, incredibly popular is a membership. And so people pay $59 a year 
And then that gives them access to limited edition cuts and cuts that are really hard for us to source in large quantities. Like we wanted to be, we wanted to offer Wagyu, but it's like, you know, you can only buy a few hundred pounds at a time. You put that out and then some people never get an opportunity. So we ended up charging a membership fee. And then with that membership, people get 5% cash back on everything they buy. So it's accruing all these, um, this cash in their like portal and they can redeem it whenever they want. And it adds up fast because, you know, the product's not, uh, you know, it's high quality. It's not going to be super cheap. Um, but if you're a member, you get access to all the Wagyu cuts. Um, there's some wild game cuts that uh, will come out. Tenderloin's part of membership. Um, and then, oh, salmon's going to be coming out as well. That's wow. just a limited edition cut. So yeah, you know, the membership's super exciting. I encourage anybody that plans on buying two or three times. That's It, it makes sense if you're going to buy two or three times. Um, I highly yeah. recommend it, everyone. Fantastic product and a great great replacement for those you know potato or starchy chips that many of us are corn chips that many of us are kind of eating too much of so um much better for you but you still get that kind of bite that chip crunch sensation that's ultimately you know directing that addiction so good deal man thank you so much mark um everyone check carnivore snacks out don't forget the discount during the month of january it's been a pleasure and um we'll we'll be talking to you again soon hopefully see you at another conference this year absolutely man always great talking to you thank you all right take care